about 15 years ago, I met a woman, and after a couple years, I encouraged her to think about making a decision in her life and told her that it was in her best interest to marry me. And she was desperate, so she married me. And you know what she gave me? She gave me a family. Three years ago at Thanksgiving dinner, we invited her family to come over. Her 95-year-old grandfather pulls up in the driveway in his Cadillac. I'm a gentleman, I go out there, Grandpa, why don't you come, come with me, Grandpa. Grandpa, why don't you sit down right here? You just sit down at the table, Grandpa. And I pull up a chair and I sat with him. Ladies and gentlemen, you ask an 80-year-old man or an 80-year-old woman a question, and you will get a one-minute answer that has over 60 years of experience, over 60 years of books they've read, people they've met, education they've received, wisdom that they have gained. If you have a trusted adult in your life that you can talk to, someone whose opinions you value, go to them. As I sat there with my wife's grandpa, it occurred to me that he was really old. And I don't say that to be funny, but it occurred to me that the time was near. And I made a decision at that moment that for the next amount of time that my grandpa's going to live on this earth, I wanted every single day that I was home, I wanted to go sit with him. I wanted to listen to him. I wanted to hear him. I wanted to know him. Because I think in life that education is not within four walls, but your education is about the people you meet, the places you go, the, the things you do, with who you do it with, when you do it, why you do it, how you do it. And I think the smart people in this room will take the ego off their shoulders and they will open their heart to the wisdom and experiences of people that come before them. And so the decision that I made was that every single day I was going to sit with him and it was the greatest decision that I've ever made. For two and a half years, three years, every single day, I would wake up in the morning, I would leave my house in Cape Cod, Massachusetts, I would drive three miles to my wife's grandfather's house, I would pull up in the driveway, I would walk up the patio, and every single morning, there he was sitting in his chair. And as I walked up, When you're 95 years old, you don't go far. You go from your bedroom to your chair, your chair to the bedroom, bedroom, bathroom, bathroom, bedroom, chair, bathroom, chair, bedroom, bathroom, bedroom, chair, bathroom, chair, bathroom, chair, bedroom, bathroom, bedroom, chair, bathroom, chair. Sometimes you go to the bathroom in the chair. 95 years old, sometimes you forget where the bathroom is. And every single day you'd walk in the house and you had to shake his hand. My grandpa was old school. He used to often say, my handshake is my bond. And we've become a time in education where education is, is serving you wrong. We've become a time where we focused more on educating young people rather than teaching young people about some of the most important things in life. Please, thank you, you're welcome, excuse me, I'm sorry, yes sir, no sir, yes ma'am, no ma'am. We don't have time in education today to teach people to represent with the handshake because buying decisions people make about you in the first one-tenth of one second, they meet you. But we've become a society focused on teaching young people to take a test rather than teaching young people for the reason we got in education and that's to teach young people first, let the subject area be second. My grandpa was old school and he would invite me in and after time he gave me my chair and I would sit with him and I want to share with you our conversation. Hi grandpa, how you doing? You look good grandpa, you feeling good? You look good. It's a nice day, huh? Sky is out. <laughs> Sky's always out. <laughs> and my grandpa would just sit in his chair and he was like, he was a man of few words. 
Dropped out of school in the seventh grade, didn't have to go to the Second World War because he started a company where it provided food for the community. And every single day, our conversation was short. I'll see you later, Grandpa. I'd leave, and the next day I'd come back, I'd pull up in the driveway. There he was, sitting in his chair. I would walk up the patio, I'd shake his hand. He would invite me to sit down, same conversation. How you feeling, Grandpa, good? You look good. Nice day, huh? I grew up in a family of alcoholics and I was abused as a child. But in that time I got to spend with my grandpa, I learned how to spell love. T I M E. Time. The average family spends today, every single day, in meaningful conversation. The average family spends less than 30 seconds a day. In one week, the average family spends less than three and a half minutes in meaningful conversation. Nearly every single day for two and a half to three years, I got to sit with my grandpa. And six months ago, one day, I come over and he's sitting there and I will never forget what he said. You know? I've been thinking. <laughs> 97 years old, that's all you get to do is think. <laughs> we never have time to do things right. But we always have time to do things over. Why don't we just do it right the first time? Think about that. Young people, you make a decision in your life today that you're not going to throw in the towel. You're not going to quit. You're not going to walk away. You're not going to look to take the shortcut. You don't want the easy way out. But if you make a commitment in your life to do it right the first time, you will find out that you will save yourself time. It was the next day, I was on my way to my grandpa's house. When I pull up in the driveway, I, I walked up the patio and my grandpa was not sitting in his chair. And I knew then that something wasn't right. As I walked in my grandpa's house, I noticed 25 feet away, laying on the kitchen floor was my grandpa, 97 years old. And he was staring at me. He had fallen, he had broken his hip, and he couldn't get up, and he was hoping that maybe Jeffrey was going to come and visit him that day. And I go over to my grandpa, I get down on my knees, and I say, don't worry, grandpa, you're going to be okay. And I called 911 and the police and the ambulance and the fire department. They come rushing to his house, and they were incredible in the care that they took over my grandpa. And they rushed him off to the hospital, and with the permission of the family, they did emergency surgery on my grandpa. And I sat there in the hospital, and that afternoon when they brought him to his room, I was there waiting for him. And they put him in bed, and I just sat there, and I just held his hand, and I said, don't worry, Grandpa, you're going to be okay. Grandpa, you're going to be okay. The family came in that afternoon, and we celebrated the legacy of a great man. We laughed and smiled, and then we're going out to dinner that night when my wife stopped, and she said, honey, why don't you stay with him? It's your grandpa, why don't you stay with him? Because the family thinks that grandpa would like it best if you were there, you're the closest one to him. <laughs> yeah, really? Yeah, I'm just gonna stay then. Thank you. Well, are you gonna come back after dinner? No, I have school in the morning. Okay, like, you gonna come back after school tomorrow? Yes. Okay, can, like, you do me a favor? Yeah, what's that? When you come in, can you bring your Victoria's Secrets catalog? Because he likes that. Uh, he's 97, he can't read anymore, but he can still look at pictures. I went back with my grandpa and I just sat there and I just held his hand and the night went on and I held his hand and I said, you're gonna be okay, grandpa. And the next morning the doctor came in, the doctor checked his vital signs. And then the doctor called the family. And I would never wanna be a doctor for this reason. 
He sat us all down as he stood before us and he said, I'm sorry. I checked his vital signs and I knew that doing the surgery would put him at great risk. That's why we talked about it. But his heart capacity is down to less than 10%. I think the time has come. And I give him maybe 48 hours to live. I'm sorry. The whole family went back and we sat with them. Then the family decided to go out to dinner that night. And I said to my wife, I'm not going. I'm staying here and I'm not leaving. And that second night I sat there with my wife's grandfather and I held his hand and I said, don't worry, Grandpa. And I said everything to my grandpa at that moment that as a child we wish our family would say to us. We didn't have, con we had, we, everything in life was conditional. We didn't have anything that was unconditional. We didn't have parents that said, I love you. You're special. You're wonderful. I care about you. You know what it's like to not have a family? You know what it's like to grow up and have everything be conditional? You know what it's like to be beat as a child? You know what it's like to grow up in a family of alcoholics? And then I decided at that moment to tell my grandpa everything that I wish my family had said to me, but that I give to my daughters every day. I love you, man. It's okay, Grandpa, you can go. I'll take care of the family. Thank you, Grandpa. Thank you for, for giving me the be most beautiful wife in the world. Thank you for accepting me into your family and making me feel like I'm one of your own. We'll be okay. And I sat there through the night and I held his hand and at 7.30 that morning, my grandpa died. And when the nurse came in, she said, I'm sorry. And I said, yeah, me too. She said, he was a good man, wasn't he? I said, you don't even know. And so I ask you this question. If you had someone in your life that was given less than one month to live and you could say anything to that person, who would that person be? What would you say? And why haven't you done it? Because young people, you want to be happy. Ladies and gentlemen, time will always hold you accountable. But find people in your life that you trust, you respect, and whose opinions you value. Happiness is one thing, but righteousness is another. And over time, righteousness will make you happy. Peace.